Hello, and welcome to this Canyons U bite-sized PD. Today, we are going to be talking about using lenses to connect to current events. Since this is not a live recording, we will go ahead and skip our question. Hello, and welcome to Canyons U Bite Size PD. This Bite Size PD is going to focus on using lenses to connect to current events. Since this is not a live recording, we will go ahead and skip these couple of slides. All right, we are now to our MTSS framework. This is just a reminder for us that everything that we do in Canyon School District is tied back to our MTSS practice for all educators. And here is our learning intention and success criteria for the day. I can learn how to apply lenses to current events to show a consistent pattern of continuity and change over time. And our success criteria is I can implement lenses to current events to show a consistent pattern of continuity and change over time. So some of you might be familiar with this slide. Um, and this quote, I've used it before. This is from Teddy Roosevelt. It says, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. And I feel very strongly that it's our responsibility as educators, particularly um, as the high school social studies specialist um, for high school teachers and all um, social studies teachers, no matter what level, uh, to try to help students see connections with what they're learning now um, to the past. So this is kind of where we get into this idea of identifying patterns in history and helping students really see how things have stayed the same in history over time, but also how they have changed. And we might think as teachers that students naturally are making those connections, that they're actually um, intuitively maybe being reflective about those patterns, but I think it's really important as educators that, that we really help students see how things have stayed the same or changed over time. So you're familiar with um, the themes, lenses, and current events that uh, Scott Lambert and I have introduced to our secondary social studies teachers. If you need a little reminder, we'll go through them quickly. Remember the themes are conflict, compromise, and progress. And the idea is that if you use these themes consistently in your class with your students, that they will start seeing other times in history when there was conflict, when there was compromise, when there was progress. And so that's kind of the thought behind this question. How could these three themes apply to history or, or a government class, right? And, and there's multiple layers of how these themes could apply, but specifically relating to this idea of continuity and change over time. The next one, you know, that we kind of have up here is, is really this idea of how could these themes make teaching more engaging for students? And so the idea there is instead of, you know, um, us as teachers kind of being the stage, the stage on the stage telling teacher, uh, telling our students, then, then students are starting to, to think about conflict and compromise and progress consistently through their social studies learning experience. And they're starting to be engaged with inquiry type questions um, through, through writing, through discussion. Now the lenses, um, we really wanna focus on, of course, in this bite-sized PD. And, and these are the lenses that we introduced. So we have um, people, so minorities, gender, families, occupations. We have systems, social, economic, religion, po politics. And in geography, we have physical boundaries and, and human geography. And so 
lenses and historical thinking skills really tie well together because this allows for easy ways to practice those historical thinking skills. Students need to be able to analyze text to combat misinformation and disinformation in today's society. And starting with historical documents is a great entry point. And so as we teach students historical thinking skills, how to look at primary documents and secondary documents and to analyze and dive into them, those skills can be transferred to, to today, what they're seeing today on, on social media, um, same type of thinking skills. A really great resource, um, Scott and I both really um, endorse this, this resource, supplemental resource is, is reading like a historian. So if you are thinking, okay, I, I want my kids to practice more historical thinking skills, but, but how do I do that? This is a really great um, place to start. If you click here, um, this is reading like a historian. And they have a lot of great resources here. We can also get you copies of um, any of these posters if you want. But let's say you are teaching US history. So you can come, click on there, and you can see over here by time period, all of these different lessons that they have for you. So I don't know, maybe you wanna look at the, the Stamp Act. So what this kind of does is it provides you with a historical thinking opportunity for, for your students. So the Stamp Act says, the passage of the Stamp Act in 1765 outraged American colonists and fueled discontent with British rule that led to the outbreak of the American Revolution. Why was a rather small tax so fiercely resented? In this lesson, students engage in key aspects of historical thinking as they explore that question. So there's an inquiry question, which is fantastic, that connects to wiser. And then they explore answers to that question um, through historical thinking skills that are all provided down here. There's um, materials the teacher can download, materials that the students can download that you can download for them in English or in Spanish. And then they have the original primary documents. And so you're able to um, really not do the work because they've done the work for you. And I, I know that that sometimes is a hard, I remember when I was teaching, you know, sometimes it was always, you know, it was hard to find those primary documents um because that took extra time and so this reading like historian like i said um over here has has just really great great resources that are that are already made for you so i suggest that that be a great starting point for you to help your students to begin looking at lenses so then current events so the idea then is you take that same lens that maybe you're looking at um, a particular primary document with, or you're looking at a particular time in history with, and then you apply it to current events. And, and the key here is it's not just, you know, no random current events that you're talking about. What you're talking about in your class, as far as current events go, are related to things that they're learning about in class specific to to the content standards. So let's try this out. Um, let's go ahead and do US History Standard 5.2. Students will use evidence to investigate the effectiveness of the New Deal as a response to economic crisis. So I have three questions here for you. Which theme could you use to teach that standard? Which lens could you use? And how could you tie it to current events? And so if you want to do the whole package, that's kind of where, what, well, what you would ask yourself, those three questions. So, you know, we're talking about um, the New Deal, the effectiveness of the New Deal as a response to economic crisis. So, you know, progress, right? Um, technically, you could probably make an argument for, for any of those. Now, when we go to lenses, you know, 
how do we want to look at this standard then, right? So the standard again is students will use evidence to investigate the effectiveness of the New Deal as a response to economic crisis. So what lens do we want to funnel that in on, right? Um, do we want to look at the effectiveness of the New Deal in response to economic crisis through the lens of minorities, through um, a political system, through an economic system? You know, what lens do we want to look at? Because our students might not realize that that really there are all of these lenses to look at history through. And depending on which lens you're looking at, um, it it might look a little different, right? So if we're evaluating the New Deal as um, a social system or a political system compared to an economic system, that's going to have some variance. So um, let's pick gender. Let's let's pick women. Okay. So here we go. We go through the process. Which theme could you use to teach the standard? Again, this allows for more inquiry and discussion. Maybe we'll pick progress. Um, what if you use the lens of women? Again, you have several choices to choose from. And then you have a primary document here, right? And so we're talking about, we need evidence, right? And, and this particular document, if, if you take a moment to read it and you look at the date, you realize that, that yes, there, there must be as many women out of jobs in cities and suffering extreme poverty as there are men. What, what happens to them? And what did happen to them? Was the New Deal effective in helping them, right? And so, so you start having these conversations, right? And then you can say, well, let's look at another lens. Let's look at the lens of, of men. You know, was the New Deal more effective in helping men versus women and why? You know, what... Um, social constructs existed at that time to to influence that, right? And you're having these discussions together um, as a class. So we've done the themes part, we've done the lens part, now the current event part. You need to connect it to current events today. So remember, we were talking about a government um, federal program, the New Deal, that was used to alleviate economic distress, right? A, a depression. So I found this article from January 4th, 2023. These five gender equity events impacted the US economy in 2022. Addressing them in 2023 could unlock a 3.1 trillion opportunity. And so as you go through, oops, and you click on this article, um, you have all of these ads, of course. Um, women's labor force participation has been stunted. And then it talks about why. The jobs of the future are leaving women behind. They talk about that. Pay equity worsens. They talk about that. Um, more men are spending time as fathers. Women were underrepresented at climate change talks. The road ahead. And, and the source of this is, is, you know, fortune. So then we can kind of talk about it and say, okay, well, today, you know, how how are women faring? You know, well, we know that that the New Deal um, obviously helped men more than women because of the social constructs of the day. So then you could talk about, well, economically, you know, where are women today, right? So what impact does the economy have on women today? You could talk to, to students about that. But this funnels and focuses the current event specifically to a topic that you're talking about in class and helping students see the connection through the same lens today. So how can lenses and current events show continuity and change? If you use the themes of conflict, compromise, and progress consistently in your classroom, students will begin to see those patterns, how things stay the same and how they change over time. If you use lenses consistently in your classroom, students will begin to see how things stay the same and how things change, you know, for each of those lenses over time. And if you connect lenses to current events, students can see how things are today, right? So they could see from that article how some things have changed, how some things have stayed the same. And it's just an exploration in inquiry into social studies. So things to consider as you use lenses and current events, 
use the standards, apply lenses to standards through primary and secondary documents, choose current events that reflect the chosen lens and connect to a current event, consider creating consensus sources as a class or selecting a current event that applies to the lens that you're using and that it meets the Canyon School District's instructional materials policy. If you're not familiar with that policy, I've just clicked on it. Um, so you'll want to kind of familiarize yourself with that. It's these 13 things here. And email me. Email me for a themes poster if you would like some of the reading, um, like historian posters. Uh, I have access to those as well. So going back to our learning intentions and success criteria, the success criteria was I can implement themes, lenses, and current events primarily in my curriculum so that students can identify continuity and change over time. And hopefully, as we have talked about um, using lenses and connecting them to current events, you can see how that will help students make connections from the past to the present and show how things have stayed the same and how things have changed. Because as we know, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. This is the themes and social studies poster. In case you'd like one of those, just feel free to email me. And thanks so much.